Thank you, Jesus. There's none like you, Lord, in all the earth. All the earth shall worship you, sing praise to thy name, O Most High. Hallelujah. We glorify you, Jesus. Bless your name, O God. Bless your name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. There's no one like you, Lord, in all the earth. Amen, and praise the Lord for another blessed day that he has created. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I had a beautiful day. Was well, able to get some stuff done around the house, laundry done, and just and had a heart of peace throughout the whole day. And I thank God that his peace surpasses all understanding as we learn how to just rest in the finished work of the cross that he keep us steadfast in the faith of Jesus Christ. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly for all we can ask or think or imagine. He's faithful to hear our cry when we call upon him in faith. He's able to bring us through every trial and every test that we encounter. No matter what comes our way, the word says, having done all the stand, stand therefore with the full arm of God to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And we're living in a time where the enemy is attacking God's people over and over and over. But we have to stay in the word of God. We got to stay prayed up. We got to continue to seek the face of God. Because when you seek God's face and not his hand, God shows you the direction he has for your life. And he shows the trajectory in your mindset of who you are to him. That you can see yourself as he sees you. And walk in obedience to the word of God. Amen. We're going to continue in our book tonight. Breaking the threefold demonic cord. Breaking the threefold demonic cord. How to discern and defeat the lies of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Delilah. How to discern and defeat the lies of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Delilah. These are strong forces to stand against God's people. And we have to be willing to stand on the word of God knowing that it's the word that gives us the power to overcome. If you don't stand the word, how are you going to defeat the enemy in your life? It is very vital as a child of God to get into the Word of God. When you get into the Word, the Word gets inside of you, and the enemy has no power, no control over your life until you give him the power. So tonight, we're taking back our power. The more we study this Word and get a revelation, of the word of God. We're taking back our kingdom authority. When you realize that Jesus Christ gave you the authority over all the powers of the enemy, the enemy cannot deceive or manipulate you to do anything you do not do not choose to do. Life is based on choices. And what you choose to do and whom you choose to serve is the results you get in your life. Amen. So let's go into a word of prayer. So gracious God, our Father, 
I thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to share your word. I ask, O oh God, that you speak into our spirits a rhema word from the heart of God. Break the chains and the shackles off our mind. Remove the yokes off our neck. Lift the burdens off our shoulders. Break the strongholds, O oh God, that we've been holding on to. And set us free from the inside out. Ask, O oh God, to forgive us for our sins today. Known and unknown sins. The spirit of rebellion that we walked in. The stubbornness we have sometimes. The prideful hearts. And help us, O oh God, to walk and abide in your forgiveness. Not just for ourselves, but forgive others who trespassed against us. That you will forgive us our trespasses. And ask that you will be glorified and exalted, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen again. Praise the Lord. I'm so excited tonight about the Word of God. I pray that you are excited because the Word is going to transform your life tonight through the power of the Holy Spirit. But you got to be willing to let the Lord speak into your spirit. Amen. We're going to be talking about tonight the titles. Bell's titles. We already, already designed and talked about who Baal is. We already talked about the attributes of Baal, how Baal operates in performance. He operates in a religious spirit. We talked about that in previous lessons. How Jezebel, she overpowered her husband Ahab, became a woman of authority and in, inflicted idolatry worship on the children of Israel. Because they did not have a backbone to trust God and keep standing on his word. We find ourselves in today's time, we, we, we're vulnerable to the tactics of the enemy when we don't pray and we don't stay in God's word. And we don't keep, keep continually studying God's word to build ourselves up in our faith to keep walking in divine order. We will continue to walk in the spirit of rebellion. And that's a very strong spirit the enemy uses in the church to keep God's people in a spiritual shutdown. We talked about we talked about the spiritual shutdown the enemy here. He wants to imprison you. And he imprisons you in your mind. If you don't take control in your mind, demonic shutdown will take place in your heart. And it will imprison you from walking in obedience to the word of God. So we got to get the word of God before us every day. Read that word. Meditate on the word day and night as God commanded Moses to Joshua. God commanded Mo, uh, Joshua, not Moses. God, God told Joshua that he had to meditate on the word of God day and night. Keep it in his heart and don't let it depart from him. That means you got to mutter. You got to speak that word to yourself until you believe that word and get that word in your spirit. When the word resonates in your spirit, that's when you begin to see the changes in your life taking place to strip the enemy's strongholds off of your mindset. Amen. God bless you, Jessica. God, thank you for tuning in tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to go into our book tonight. So Baal's titles, Baal's titles. This is really interesting because as we were talking about the spirit of religion, Baal operates and connects with many different demonic forces. And those forces band together to triumph over a child of God. You got the witchcraft. You got the idol worship. You got the spirit of religion. You got the mind binding spirit. Controlling spirit. Deception. Cunning. Malicious. Many different things the enemy does through other people. To provoke you. To get out of character. When you are standing firm in the word of God. You should not let nobody pull you out of your character. I've seen people soon after they get out of church service on Sunday mornings and afternoon, 
they go back to their old pattern of behavior. They go back to smoking their cigarettes, smoking their blunts, smoking their weed, drinking alcohol. They go back to doing the things that they did before they came to church. Cussing folk out, ready to fight with someone, offend them. They're easily offended because of the spirit of Jezebel have entered to their heart. And that's one reason why we have to understand and know how to defeat that spirit of Jezebel in our lives and know how to shut down the different voices that are speaking through this spirit. Amen. So I'm going to put this on the screen in just a second and we're going to begin into our lesson tonight. Okay, it's on the screen. It says, Baal was known as the God of heavens. Not the heaven with God the world, but the heavenly realm where demonic forces operate because Satan is the prince of the air. He is the God of horoscope and ability to go before and tell the future. The Ouija boards and all false prophecies and divinations. Baal, also known as the exalted Lord of the earth and the Lord of the city. These titles reflect Baal's assignment over cities, nations, and the earth. If a city is sinful, then the entire municipality might be isolated from God's blessing. That's something to think about right there. That one point by itself, how one person's sin can affect a whole city, can affect the whole nation can affect your family. And it's so true because when you are violating God's word as a leader in your home, you give power to the enemy to wreak havoc in your home and come into your house and bring disruption in your order. See, we got to understand God has a divine order and Satan has a satanic order that operates when we choose to follow whichever God we choose. If I choose to serve the God of Israel, the King of glory, the Prince of peace, then I must operate and abide in God's divine order every day of my life. If I choose to follow after the enemy, then I have to obey his, divine, his, his satanic order. And that's a spiritual order. God has a holy order. Satan has a satanic, wicked order. And each one has an influence in your mind and your heart. So if a city is sinful, the municipality, which is mean the judicial system, will be isolated separated, singled out from God. You know, it's something to think about that because every time the children of Israel rebelled against God, they isolated themselves from God. God didn't leave them, but they left God. And every time they left God, what happened? They found themselves into a place called captivity a place of bondage. We have a place of bondage in our lives today every time we sin against God. And the sin will cause your ears to be stopped with spiritual earplugs. And those spiritual earplugs will cause you to get to the place in yourself when you do not hear God's voice, but you listen to the, the, the satanic order and follow his jurisdiction system and follow his way of doing things in your life, which affects everybody connected to you. I tell you, the devil is a lie. We have to get back to the place as a people of God to know the Lord our God for ourselves. Serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, thy strength. That was the word to the God looks for your entire being to be surrendered. He's looking for your heart that's yielded, surrendered, and released into his authority. You know, I got a revelation last week concerning the Trinity. 
You know, the Trinity is made up of three persons in one, which is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, or triune God. Some say triune, some say Trinity. It still means the same thing, three and one. And God gave me this revelation that in Genesis, in the beginning of the first chapter, when God began to create the universe and the heavens and the waters and the seas and the birds of the air, the fish of the sea and all the firmaments and all, all the creatures that he made and put in the garden. It was the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Then after God finished what he was doing, he created man and put man in the garden. Right? So he put the man in the garden, but God said, let us. Make man after our image and after our likeness. The enemy wants to form you after his image and his likeness. And every time you rebel against God and turn your heart from following God, the enemy is reforming you. He's recreating you into a place of darkness. Where you become callous in your heart. Where you do not submit or obey God's word. We're all guilty of it. So when God created man and placed in the garden, he, he breathed into man what? The breath of life and man became a living soul. Because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit breathed into man. The Spirit brought the life into man. The Father and the Son brought the existence of man through the creation. When God gave me that revelation, in the book of Colossians, give me one second. I'm gonna find this scripture because this is a good one. This is really good. I gotta, I gotta read this. This is this is really good. It's in Colossians, I believe, chapter, chapter three. My, my, my. This is a really good word tonight. I pray it bless you tonight as it blesses me. And I pray God continue to convict and change your heart to become better. Amen, amen. Colossians chapter 2. Let's see. Uh, thank you, Father, for this revelation tonight. Okay. Colossians chapter 2. It says, verse 18. It said, and he is the head of the body the church, who is beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in all things might be, in all things that he, he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. What is he talking about? The fullness of God. Everything that makes God, God dwells in him. And so because of this, Verse 9 in chapter 2, that's chapter 1 I just read, that's one eighteen. Chapter 2, it says, let's start at verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit at the traditions of men. You hear that? And after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. And Amplified says it like this. See to it that no one carries you off as spoil or make you yourselves captive by his so-called philosophy. That means his own doctrine. Following, it says, and read it again. It says, see, no, no man... Make let me read this again. I'm gonna get some myself down, get ahead of myself. See it to, to it that no one cares you off as spoils or make you yourself captive so by his so called philosophies and intellectualism that means his knowledge, his wisdom, and vain deceit, idle fancies, and plain nonsense, following human traditions 
men's ideas of the materials rather than the spiritual world. So people will cause you to follow after the things of the world, not the things of God. So they give you doctrines that doesn't align with God's word, but they want you to follow the doctrines of what they're telling you. And then it says, just crude notions following the rudimentaries in elementary world, just, it says, uh, just middle teachings of the universe and, and disregarding the teachings of Christ, the Messiah. So I'm going to teach you the things that I want you to learn based on my own philosophy and my own doctrine and my own uh, way of doing things of life, my own order. I want you to follow this and not, the, not God's way. So verse 9 says, For in him the whole fullness of the deity, the Godhead, continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expressions of the divine nature. Isn't that amazing? How Christ hath the Godhead dwelling in him. So what's the Godhead, you may ask? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The three persons in one that make God God dwell in Jesus Christ. So our lesson tonight, we're talking about Baal, Baal's title. Because there's many different titles Baal goes by, and there are many different religions it follows after Baal. So when God gave a revelation, he said, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have, as a believer, a child of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, dwelling in you in bodily form. Oh, my God, that's good revelation. So we have <coughs> the authority over all satanic worship. Because I have the Godhead in me. But the problem comes in, I don't know this. Because I don't study my word. So I neglect to know what I need to know as a child of God to make me more knowledgeable and understandable of who God is to me. The word says we have the mind of Christ. One thing about God, he was so crafty and so knowledgeable in wisdom, he knew how to take the things of the world from the gospel and preach the gospel to them that was right over their head. That's why I said he took the foods of preaching to confound the wise, the philosophers, the scholars, the teachers, the professors. He confounded them with his knowledge, his understanding, his wisdom. They could not grasp and get hold of the gist of God's wisdom. So we got to get in our word and know what God is saying to us as a child of God. Let's go a little further. These titles, the God of heaven, the exalted Lord of the earth, and the Lord of the cities, these titles reflect Baal's assignment over cities, nations, and the earth. However, we got to pay attention when we hear certain things that try to captivate our attention to entice us from following the true God. There are so many different deceptive mechanisms in the world through television, radio, through people, through association, through gatherings, where people have different belief systems. And there are many belief systems that does not line with God's word. So we got to know what God's word says for me, myself, as a child of God, and know how to apply that word to my heart, and know how to put that guard up before me so I'll be discerning of the spirits of Jezebel, the Baal worshipers. When they present themselves before me, that will not be easily duped by the enemy. Not manipulated or connived by the enemy. 
So many people in the body of Christ have been bamboozled by the enemy because they don't study their word. So they can follow anything that sounds good. <coughs> I remember a movement back in the early 90s where the revival burst out around the country. And people would just laugh. So it spread throughout the nation that the Holy Ghost caused laughter. So people being in church service just all of a sudden just burst out and started laughing. The whole congregation just laughing. What are we laughing at? Don't even know what you're laughing at. You just follow other people because it sounded good. The word tells the joy of the Lord is my strength. So laughter is a good thing in its right place. But in a congregation where people found the rudiments of man's philosophies, they're all being deceived in the body of Christ. Then there was a movement where revival broke out, everybody prophesied. So everybody became prophets. So everywhere you went, somebody prophesied. Was not called by God. Many of them were called by themselves after following the rudiments of man's philosophy. And they began to follow a system in their church that was not orchestrated by God, but enforced by the leader what well, he had placed in his heart to do. Have you ever visited a minister in a city and felt your prayers never penetrate the heavens, but instead fell back to the earth unfruitful? I've, I've been there. I've been there. Have you been there before? When you felt like you prayed and you prayed, you cried out, bombarded heaven, and it's like nothing happens. The weights are still there. The yoke's still on the neck. The burden's still on your shoulder. The heaviness is still on your mind. You just couldn't seem to get it off your heart. Then there's time to go places and you're praying and you know God hears you, but it doesn't seem like he hears you because we lose our focus. I found out that when I pray, and Jesus says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. When we pray what Jesus told us to pray, forgive man that trespasses men who trespass against us. God honors the prayer that's prayed in sincerity of heart, not out of performance. You got people that pray certain types of prayers and the same prayer over and over out of performance because they've been doing it for so many years. It's a cycle in their mind to keep praying the same way. There's no change in their prayer. There's nothing different in their prayers. They're stuck in a cycle in their minds where this is the record I need to play every day when I pray. God have mercy. Jesus said those people, they have the reward. Read that in Matthew chapter 6. They have the reward because they're stuck following the rudiments of man philosophy or the philosophy they made up themselves on how they are to pray. When you pray sincerity of heart, it don't have no format. It comes from the heart and it comes out of you from the spirit of God to get God's attention to hear your cry and answer you. We're going to teach that one day about prayer. We're going to teach it one day. Let's go a little further. According to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 23. Let's turn there. Deuteronomy chapter 28. You got your Bible? Go to Deuteronomy. 28, 23. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So Deuteronomy 28, 23. Says, and thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. You know why? Because God cursed the children of Israel. He told them the whole chapter talked about the blessings and the curses. Whom God blesses, you walk in obedience. 
who be cursed is the ones that walk in disobedience. So when you pray, so the heaven is shut up to you. He said, be like, like brass because he said it's shut up to you. God's not hearing you. He only hears when you come to repentance. And you cry to God, God, I need you to forgive me for sinning against you. I love Psalm 51. Psalm 51, David said, against thee, thee only have I sinned and that is evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou judges. He, he said, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Because if you don't have a heart to pray the prayer God is looking for, God is not listening to you. He's not looking for a system of prayers or a cycle in your mind that's stuck on a broken record. He's looking for a heart that's crying out from a sincere of heart, God, I need you. Sometimes all you call this Jesus. Jesus, I need you right now. And guess what? He hears that prayer because it comes from the heart. Listen to this. When a people are disobedient, didn't I just, just say that? God shuts off heaven. Blessings and causes the ground to be barren. You wonder why your vineyard is empty. We all have a spiritual vineyard that's supposed to be productive is bringing forth the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. But well, sometimes our vineyard becomes barren through rebellion. So everything that God is trying to harvest in you, you shut up the heaven from bringing forth the rain. So the spiritual rain can't fall on you because you're stuck in your mindset resisting God. Baal can therefore become a ruling principality over their city or region. You hear that? That's deep. The enemy is so powerful. When he does not submit to God, you don't submit to God. He has so much power and control over a child of God. When you don't submit to God. Knowing that over a region, a city, a community, he loves community. If he can get the region, he can get the city. If he can get the city, get the community. Get the community, he can get the homes. So he can control everybody connected in that region and bring destruction in everybody's life at one time. That's the reason why we need to pray over our cities, pray over our communities, pray over our children, pray over our families. Because we're all being attacked every day by the power of Jezebel through Baal worship, through idol worship, through the enemy. And we have to pray against those things that come to violate your life. Everybody have a stronghold. But we got to be willing to admit I have a stronghold in order to be delivered. In order to do as 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 has been our key scripture from the beginning of our first start this teaching lesson. Cast down every imagination and every high thought that exalts itself against knowledge of God. And bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. You cannot bring your thoughts captive to Jesus Christ if there's no repentance and no submission. When I submit to Jesus Christ, I give him the power, I give him the charge, I give him the authority to take control over my stronghold. So whatever it is in my life, that sin issue you're dealing with, the thing you might be gambling, might be lying, might be selfish, might be rebellious, might be stubborn, might be prideful, it doesn't matter what it is. When you submit to Jesus Christ, he takes authority over everything that tries to imprison you right here in your mind. The death structure we've been talking about. He takes control over that death structure where it cannot lock you out into a place of darkness, a place of exile. 
just like a person who had leprosy. Every time a person had leprosy, they were placed into an exile. They were not entitled to mingle among anybody else except their own kind who had leprosy outside of the city. And when they came to the place and met Jesus, ten lepers who met Jesus, said, Lord, if you're willing, make us clean. And Jesus said, I'm willing. And he healed them all. He said, now go see yourself to the priest. So after they went, they were healed. What's your excuse for not being healed? I'm not talking about a physical healing. I'm talking about the, the spiritual healing that takes place inside of you. As they went, they were healed. Only one had a grateful heart enough to come back and say, Lord, bow down and worship it. Thank you for healing me. A thankful heart releases the rain upon your harvest, the vineyard in your life to bring forth the production what God wants to bring in your life of the fruit of the Spirit to make you better. If the spirit of Jezebel is allowed to operate within a city or region or even local churches, you can bet on this one thing. Bell is active. Ain't that something? Bell is active. We need to pay attention to that. So Bell is active. Ain't that something? But we got to pay attention and allow the Spirit of God to shut down the voices of the enemy from deceiving us and manipulating and controlling us. Just like in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve, when the enemy came and deceived Eve to eat of the forbidden fruit off the tree of good and evil, tree of knowledge, they fell because they turned their eyes off of who they were in Christ or in God. They were already in the image of God. They were already had everything God wanted them to have in the Garden. If they had reminded themselves who they were, they would have never fallen. But the enemy came to a deceptive place in their life and caused them to miss out on what God has for them for eternity. They were living eternally in holiness and righteousness. But because of the spirit of enemy manipulated, they failed. Let's go on a little further. Whenever Jezebel is given a place, she brings idol worship to her, with her. As a result, a curse or barrenness and desolation takes root. You hear that? When Jezebel is active and she comes to your life to influence you, she brings with her Idol worship. Didn't she do with the children of Israel? We read that last week. Didn't she call them all to follow her idol worship? And made a, a false decree and all that would he obey her and follow her? What are you following? But if we serve the Lord and worship him only, then we receive his abundant blessing. Isn't that amazing? We receive his abundant blessing in our lives because of who he is to us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you, Lord God. Amen. Go on a little further. This is good here. Baal's associates, Molech, and Rephan. An associate is someone with whom one does business, right? The names become associated. So if I have an associate in my life, 
they're identified as someone who connects with me as an associate. They're not a friend, they're not a confidant, but they're an associate. And we got to understand that associates will abandon you. Even in business, an associate may get upset with you and decide to part ways. But a friend stays closer than a brother. Even though we might have disagreement, heated discussions, we might fall out, but we're still connected. For the main purpose, with the reason why we're together, to fulfill the business. Many times associates have strong covenant arrangements. You hear that? A covenant arrangement. Excuse my voice tonight. I'm still dealing with this uh, sinus draining in the throat. Causing my voice to be obscured a little bit. But that is so true. Because some associates, they have a strong covenant arrangement. And they stand by that covenant. This agreement. I just mentioned it. Their agreement. And nothing can separate them from their agreement. Except themselves. Demonic spirits are, con are connected by their association. You need to write that down there. Demonic spirits highlight this. Listen to this. They are so connected by association. They are associated with each other through their different assignments. So every demonic force has a different assignment and how they are to influence and attack your life. If you don't study the word of God and get the spirit of desire in you, you never discern when the enemy comes with an assignment to distract you. Some assignments are to flick you. Some assignments will make you poor. Some assignments are to take things from you. The enemy comes in many different forms to attack our lives because we're not paying attention and we're just precariously going through life and not praying up and not consecrated, not hearing the voice of God and not obeying God. Fear and torment, for instance. Work strongly together and associate with the spirit of infirmity. That's deep. That's deep right there. Fear and torment. What's fear? Being afraid of something that's of the unknown. Torment. It's like punishment. Keep nagging at you. Keep pressing at you. Keep stabbing at you. Just being punished. And you feel you're being punished by God. All because of fear. Fear deceives you. To think God is tormenting you. So it operates in the spirit of infirmity. And the spirit of infirmity brings afflictions in your spirit before it manifests outside your body. That was deep. That was a good revelation there. I hope y'all caught that. The spirit of infirmity comes from the inside when you allow fear and torment to control your thought life. When a person is ill, fear and torment are attached to the illness. And that's true. Because when you get cancer, the first thing that comes to your mind, I'm going to die. Where is God when I need him? How come God let this happen? How come God didn't stop this? He had the power to stop it. Why didn't he stop it? What did I do wrong? What did I, where, who am I wrong? They call me afflicted. So we think somebody else afflicted with cancer. When it's something you've done to yourself through the things you've been eating or the things you've been consuming in your body is not, that's not good. That's been toxic. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So we got to understand when Jesus says 
He bore our sickness and our punishment on the cross. By stripes we're healed. He was talking about the spiritual fulfilling of healing in your spirit. Because healing takes place in the spirit before it manifests in the body. I said this to someone the other day. How we pray, we cry out to God, and we ask God to heal us, and it seems like God never hears us, God never answers us. It's like he abandoned us, he turned his ear away from hearing our cry, and, and so we feel like that God doesn't care about me. Right? Isaiah 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. What's a transgression? A violation of a law? You transgress against God's word, his law, his decrees. But it says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Iniquity is wickedness. So the abundance of sin in your heart is spurned in wickedness. Stuff you do willfully and don't care if you're caught or not. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Chastise. What's chastise? Punishment for your wrongdoings, for the transgressions was upon him. Then it says, and with his stripes, we are healed. Ain't that something? So the healing in the word is a metaphor that refers to the spirit. So the healing from his stripes take place in the spirit. A spirit of man can endure sickness, but a broken, a crushed spirit, who can bear? So when I'm crushed in my spirit and broken, that's a hard thing to deal with. When someone crushed your spirit because you trusted them, they violated you, they hurt you, they lied to you, they abandoned you, they turned their back on you, that's a crushed spirit. That caused people to commit suicide. That caused people to give up on life. Get into a dark place, shut themselves in their house, don't answer the phone, don't turn on the television, sit in a dark room, in depression. All because I got a crushed spirit. But he says, by his stripes, we are healed. So once I receive the healing, when I have a spirit of infirmity, it has to leave my body and leave me alone. Because I said this the other day, even said in a prayer line this morning, that when I have a spirit of infirmity, and it says by his stripes we're healed, my thing just froze up on me. Come on, sir. Okay, so when God begins to speak in the spirit, it says he sent his word to heal you from all infirmities, from sickness and disease, right? From all the power of the enemy. His word begins to manifest on the inside. Once it gets in the inside, you get a revelation in your mindset. Revelation in the mindset goes into the heart. God gives you ideas on how to manifest the healing in your body. It might mean taking medication for a season. It might mean going to the doctor, being examined, having some all type of uh, procedures done. Doesn't matter what it is. God used those things as an avenue to bring healing in your body. Ooh, that's good. That is so good. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I preach myself happy on that, y'all. I tell you. But when you get that revelation... It doesn't matter how I feel. My throat is still healed. 
God still gives me ideas on how to bring it to fruition, to manifest the healing. Drink herbal teas. Drink some throat coat tea. Drink some orange juice. Do stuff that you know. Drink some salt water. Gargle with it because he knows what you got to do to bring the healing forth. But we, we, we don't pay attention. We say we're studying God's word. And we say we're listening to the voice of God. But we're not doing what the Spirit tells us to do. So we may attain a spirit of infirmity on the inside. God can take anything out of you that does not need to be there. Acts chapter 7 verse 43. Let's go to Acts chapter 7 verse 43. I tell you, I'm, I'm teaching tonight the way God has given it to me. Acts chapter 7 verse 43. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Molech in the star of your God, Rimphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I carried you away beyond Babylon. So you got to understand, I was looking up something earlier. Who is Molech, right? And Molech is another name that means king. Let me put this camera over here. Okay. So Molech is another name that means king. It was, it was originated with the Phoenicians. So it was idol worship. The Phoenicians, they worship. Okay? It's a type of sacrifice made to confirm or acquit a vow. Molech is a Hebrew word for king. It was a common it was common for the Israelites to combine the name of a pagan god with the vows in the Hebrew word for shame. This, this is how the goddess of fertility, fertility and war Astarte became Astoreth. The combination of the MLK or Melech or Bashef results in Molech, which could be interpreted as a personified ruler of shameful sacrifice. It had also been spelled Milcom or Mil Milkim or Malek. As Taurus was the consort or the ritual prostitution was considered an important form of worship. Prostituting to worship his God. But also this was a God, listen to this, Molech Worship was limited to Canaan. But it also, let me go a little further. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's the Phoenicians were a loosely gathered group of people who inhabited Canaan, modern day Lebanon, or Syria, Syria, or Syria or, and Israel between 1550 BC and 300 BC. So, in addition to sexual rituals, more like worship included child sacrifice or passing children through the fire. It is believed that idol of Molech were giant metal statues of a man with a bull's head. Each image had, each image had a hole in the abdomen, possibly outstretched forearms that made a kind of ramp to a hole. A fire was lit in or around the, sta the statue. Babies were placed in the statue's arms or in the hole when couples sacrificed their firstborn, they believed that Molech would ensure financial poverty, pro prosperity, financial prosperity for the family and for future children. Ain't that crazy? So the children of Israel, when God told them not to mingle with other nations, they became rebellious and began to follow the customs of the idol worship of the Phoenicians. And worship Molech, sacrificing their firstborn children to this idol. My God, my God. Molech worship was was wasn't limited to Canaan. The Molech in North Africa bear the grieving MLK, often written MLK MR and MLKDM, 
which may mean sacrifice of lamb and sacrifice of man. In North America, North Africa, North Africa, Molech was renamed Kronos. So you hear the word Kronos. Kronos migrated to the Carthage in Greece and his mythology grew in, to include his becoming a titan and the father of Zeus. Mola is affiliated with, sometimes equated to Baal, although the word Baal was also used to designate any god or ruler. Then I looked up what was Rephim. And I tell you, these things were crazy. Oh my God, it was crazy. Because what is the star of Rephim? Remphim or Remphan mentioned in Acts chapter 7 43. So, in the context of Steve of Stephan, reference to the star of, of your god Rephan, he mentioned the golden calf that Israel worshiped in Sinai. Acts chapter 7, verse 39 to 41. He then said that God turned away. And God turned away from them and gave them over to worship the sun, the moon, and the stars. One of those stars they worshiped was the star of Remphim. Finally, Stephen points to God's de determination to send the Israelites into exile in Babylon, verse 43. Stephen's argument before the Sanhedrin was that the current generation of Israel were just as stiff necked as their ancestors always resisting the Holy Spirit. So the same customs, the same mindset, the same attitude, the same heart of worship rebelled against God was the same thing in the new generation of Israel. They still resisted the Holy Spirit and they proved themselves that they were stubborn and rejected Christ. So the star Rephim, which is also the god of Molech, is associated with the god of Molech. So we got to really know for ourselves who we are serving in today's time. I tell you, if you don't know who you're serving, you're in danger. These false gods were worshipped among the countrymen of Jezebel. In this chapter of Acts, the Lord confronted the Israelites in their idolatrous worship of Molech and Rephan. He said that the Israelites had carried these idols in their hearts rather than worshiping him. So what's in your heart? What, what is leading you today? What is your idol that's, that's pre preventing you from serving God in the worship through the power of the Holy Spirit? As God could confront the Israelites, his chosen ones, while in the wilderness, they had set up a tabernacle in their hearts for these false idols instead of submitting to him. These evil influence of Baal, Molech, and Rephan upon the Israelites is the apparent and explains why they were never able to fully cross over into the promised land. All because their hearts were stuck in idolatry. Idol worship will cut off your promise. It will hinder you from receiving all that God has destined to be in your life. Molech, also known as Moloch, was the God of child sacrifice. Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 5, write these scriptures down. Verse 30, chapter 32, verse 35. It was murdering stronghold that took the lives of future generations. You hear that? My God, my God, my God. Mm, mm, mm. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I tell you. Mark this, because this is really good. 
This, let's see, read this again. This right here, you might want to highlight. Write it down. You might want to write it down. It's in your book. If you got the book, follow along the book. It's in the book. The fluence of Baal and Molech were easily explained. The spiritual dynamics motivated Jezebel to murder God's prophets. Subsequently, her generational seed, after Leah, listen to this, murdered her own grandson to seize the throne of Judah. That's how powerful the spirit was and still is today if you don't allow God to strip it from your life. And it caused you to abort your promise, abort your anointing, abort your calling on your life. Well, the enemy knows that he can get you to cut off the future generation. That's the reason why people abort their children. They don't, they don't understand what they're doing. But they're just following the idol worship Molech. And it's going to get into it uh, in this chapter. Matter of fact, I'm going to read it before we get done tonight. I'm going to read this because this is really good. Roe versus Wade. Today, more like it's one of the evil spirits behind abortion in our society. Abortion is an ongoing atrocity and it generates from the strong Jezebel influence. The seducing stronghold of Jezebel and Molech instigates violent crimes against innocent babies. And this has never been more obvious than during Roe versus Wade when the lives of future generations hung in the balance. The spirit behind Roe versus Wade was the same spirit behind Jezebel and her generation through Athaliah. It seeks to murder and destroy any future godly seed and in their inheritance. Abortion is not limited to murdering unborn children. Abortion is the murder of all potential. In other words, whatever God has planned to be birthed can easily become aborted when Jezebel and her gods Molech have influence. The reason why so many people walk away from their calling because they listen to the voice of the enemy through the spirit of Jezebel to manipulate them to go back to a world of sin and be enticed to follow the things they've been delivered from. And they find us stuck in the past in their minds and aborting their purpose and their potential that God has placed in their heart to follow. Bill Bell's other associates, the false god Rephan, was an idol worship secretly by the Israelites during their time in the wilderness. The name Rephan is translated as lifeless. You hear that? It's translated as lifeless. We all know that the idols are lifeless so they can never speak nor hear. But the name Rephan is also associated or indicates a curse of death associated with this idol. This entire time the Israelites carried these idols, attempted to hide their sin, they remained in bondage to the Egyptian lifestyle, which only brought more grief and sorrow and death. It is any wonder that they were never allowed to cross over to their promised land. Every one of the adult Israelites, with the exception of Joshua and Caleb, died in the wilderness because they would not let go of their past. God had to raise up an entirely new generation to cross the Jordan and possess the land. God had to raise up a whole new generation to possess the land because they were so stubborn in the way they live, in the way they walk. They refused to obey God's word and let go of their idols and follow God. And 
because of this, the old generation, because they follow the ref saying, the lifeless idol, it caused death. It caused death in their hearts. It caused death in their lives. It caused them to be blinded from following their God, the true God. So dear ones, if we truly want to cross over to the place of promise, we cannot allow our past sins to be kept secret. If we want to cross over into our promises, we cannot have secret sins in our heart and our treasure box. If we hide and hold on to our past sins, we will simply take these idolatrous acts from place to place and remain in bondage. Let's decide today, right now, to repent and change. Let's make a decisive decision to repent and to change from following our idolatrous worship and return to the Lord, that he would abundantly pardon us from our sins and iniquity. God has the power, he has the ability to change your life for the better and forgive you as you repent and bring you to right standing and right relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. All you have to do tonight is pray this simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge, O oh God, that I have sinned against you. Against you only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. And I ask you, Lord God, to forgive me for the sins known and unknown and cleanse me from all unrighteousness and restore me in right standing and right relationship with you through your son Jesus and I thank you for saving me and I thank you for delivering me and setting me free in Jesus name amen if you're on here tonight and don't know Jesus your Lord and Savior the word says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but shall have everlasting night all you have to do is pray this simple prayer with me tonight you might be a backslider, one who once walked with God and you strayed away. Tonight you can be restored through this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And I ask you, O God, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, known and unknown sins. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. Now fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit to be a witness for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the whole host of heaven is rejoicing over one sinner who made a decision to follow after the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I thank you for coming on tonight. I appreciate it. Your attendance. I pray this has blessed you and even enriched you. Share this video with someone else who you m might think they need to hear this. Because this is something we all need to pay attention. We need to go back and listen to it again. I do it myself. I listen to my lessons each week. I listen to it myself and I listen to what God has given me to say and the revelation I receive from the lesson and apply it to my heart. And so I thank you again for tuning in tonight. I pray that you stay blessed, stay excited about Jesus, walking your purpose for purpose. For the day is a good day to make a decision to walk by faith and not by sight, breaking down your idols, destroying them, burn them in the fire of the Holy Spirit, and allow God to come into your heart. And deliver you from everything that's not like him, that's not pleasing in his sight. I pray that you be blessed, be excited tonight. Know that God loves you, cares about you, and so do I. So, Lord, I thank you for this lesson tonight, oh God. I pray, oh God, to have not fallen upon deaf ears. 
but it will convict all of our hearts to turn from sin of idol worship and come back to you, God. Our idols might be television, might be a computer, might be a radio, might be being around certain people that's toxic. Doesn't matter what it is, God. Draw us out that we'll be drawn to you, Father God. And I thank you, O oh God, for being a shield round about us because we fear and trust you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Once so a seed into the ministry, feel free to do so. The links are attached to the comment section of the lesson tonight. So we'll see. So we'll see. Get blessed from your seeds. I guarantee you get blessed. There's one thing about it. You know it. I don't ask for money all the time. I don't ask for nothing, really, because it goes into the ministry. Anything I get from these lessons goes right back into the ministry for the books that we use to, to teach and the lessons. But I pray you stay excited and walk in your purpose for purpose because you have been created with purpose on purpose. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we ask and run for another till we meet again. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. Until next week, 6 o'clock hour, Lord said the same. We will resume again and continue our lesson next week. Bell's Bride. Bell's Bride. As Torres. As Torres. So we're going to talk about that next week. So you all have a great night. Thank you again for tuning in. Shalom. Peace be to you.